Alright, so it took Shadow about four days to get my uh, PC set up and ready to go. I got the email earlier and um, I just jumped on here a little bit ago and logged on for the first time and started this recording and now we're testing out bandwidth. So I just want to kind of go through what happens when you shine up for Shadow. So I put out my first video, I think it was like four days ago and um, I had said then that I had signed up and I was just waiting for them to activate it. They said it would take one to four days and indeed on the fourth day uh, it was ready to go. Take a look at the settings in here. You've got the automated allocated bandwidth of 50, low latency mode if needed. Um, we've got full screen on startup option, automatic shutdown, USB peripherals. So you can actually install the drivers from your PC to your shadow PC so that your USB peripherals are, are working there. You can have uh, optimize your streaming. You've got two choices basically to prefer speed or prefer uh, quality or stability. And prefer speed is what you're going to want to run if you can. We have a low-end configuration optimization here also um, for an older uh, PC thing. So they have uh, quite a few options here to kind of adjust some things. I'm not going to do too many things right now. I just want to test the experience out, kind of how it defaults, and, uh, and then I'll start messing around with things. And um, I'll have a lot more videos in the future too. And I have experimental settings here with your high-quality audio and uh, your display safe mode, which I'm not going to mess with right now either, but it's cool that they have those options in there. So we hit home here and uh, we're going to get ready um, to launch our shadow for the first time. We'll click start now. Oh, and an update is required to switch to the official version. So we'll speed through the update here. And launching into shadow. All right. Here's our cloud uh, based shadow PC right here sitting on a regular Windows 10 desktop. I have done some minimal setup. When I signed up, I did choose the recommended settings uh, by default option, so they set some recommended settings for you. Um, but there are going to be a lot of things you got to go in as if you kind of installed Windows Fresh and do a lot of things to get yourself set up anyway. So you can click Windows uh, key plus Alt and O at any time to access your quick menu, or you can click the little icon up there anytime that it's there. So we'll click on there and go in here. You can see things like your frame rate and your bandwidth and your latency. You've got some streaming settings. Uh, 50 is the default right now after the test. I could slide that up to 70 uh, at a max if I wanted to. And then of course the option there for the low latency mode. We've also got our display settings. So you can see what we're currently running at. We're at 1440p, 144 FPS on the Shadow PC and then you can see it click down here and if you go down through here you have all the different resolutions and uh, frame rates available if you want to uh, run it natively something else you can definitely do that and this is running on an Intel Xeon processor and a NVIDIA Quadro P5000 workstation video card which is very close to a GTX 1080 I believe it has twice the um, RAM though at 16 versus the 8 We'll take a look at that in GeForce Experience also. Uh, right here I had turned on my controller and it was instantly recognized by the Shadow PC from my Xbox. So that was seamlessly, um, that seamlessly worked. That was no problem at all. I just turned that on and it popped right in there. Um, I'm not going to click my microphone right now, but this would allow your microphone to work on the Shadow PC. And you would also want to have your USB peripheral settings, um, your drivers installed. That's what we looked at in the menu earlier. So if you click the home button from here, it's actually going to take you back to the launcher. So I just wanted to show you, and this is where your shadow PC is still booted up, but you're not connected to it. So you can just click start there real quick and it only takes a few seconds and you're back into your shadow PC. So you've got a full blown Windows 10 PC um, that you can use in the cloud. You don't have to just use it for gaming. You can use it for all kinds of programs. Actually, I will probably use it for other things uh, way more than gaming. Um, especially after just kind of checking it out. Um, I do most of my gaming on my high-end PC with G-Sync and high refresh rate, and there's just about no going back once you do that. But it's working great. So you can see here, just like Windows, just like any PC you have, um, you've got your Windows updates, which in theory, when you're not on your Shadow PC, these things will be done um, while you're not on so that when you get on, like your Windows and stuff like that will already be updated. I need to go through here and update some things, but we'll get there. 
So here you can see too, we're running out to 1440p. We can click on NVIDIA and see the same thing, 1440p with the 144 hertz refresh rate. So even though that won't come through on my end on a monitor because we're streaming it, um, the PC you are playing on, uh, your game on is running at that higher refresh rate and at that resolution. So other than the latency between um, your local PC and the shadow PC, um, it is running essentially at that kind of speed and frame rate. So that was the Windows Alt F. That's how you get out of your full screen mode. And one of the things I was doing here was playing around with different uh, settings. I wanted to see if MSI Afterburner would show me the frame rate of the stream of the app, but it wouldn't. Um, I don't know if there's any way I could possibly get that to work because G-Sync is not working here for me. Um, you can't see it on the video, but my screen is flickering uh, like crazy because G-Sync is activating and, and unactivating and causing all kinds of flicker issues. Now with GeForce Now, I don't get any of that in full screen or windowed. I can leave G-Sync enabled while I'm playing any game on uh, GeForce Now, and I don't have any flickering issues on PlayStation Now for that matter, um, streaming my Xbox to my PC locally, any of those things. I can leave G-Sync enabled and I have no problem. But for some reason, with the Shadow PC app, um, I found out that I do have to disable G-Sync in order for it to work, to not flicker. And maybe there's a way around that I haven't found yet. But that's definitely something to note. Now you can see here the specs that we're running I was talking about with the CPU, um, the P5000 uh, graphics card, and I believe that graphics card has 16 gigabytes, gigabytes of RAM rather than 8 that the 1080 has. And you can see here I've had to remove the G-Sync. So we've downloaded Call of Duty. I'm just going to click play and in real time show you the startup here. We are on the 250 gigabyte SSD. This is after I've done some setup and some updates. I did have to update the uh, the display drivers. They weren't updated yet for me. I use GeForce Experience for that because I downloaded GeForce Experience. I like to use that for a few different things. So here we are booting into the game. The only difference is you can see your little shadow menu icon at the top of your screen there. Um, but when you go in game, which you will see in a little while, uh, that actually does disappear. So they are uh, recognizing that you're in game. Um, and that you wouldn't want that up there. And I'm supposing that also works with other kinds of apps um, and programs you would be using on the PC as well. So here we go. Um, I believe they're going to need an update here. Yeah, and I will speed us through that so you don't have to wait. So we're back. Um, and we are updated. We're just waiting for the shaders to install just like they would on your local PC. And so while that's happening, we'll go in and take a quick look at the options. Um, same thing as it would be uh, on your PC at home. So while we're waiting, we'll jump over here. We'll take a look at the settings. Now, on GeForce Now, they automatically load every game with recommended settings for what they've got running. Uh, so you don't have to do much. But with this, it's just like running any other PC. You're going to need to come in here. And as you go, get your graphic settings adjusted, your controls adjusted, and things the way you want them, just like you would on a local PC at home. It's not going to be the same experience as something uh, as another cloud service, but I'm going to get into more comparisons of those with some other videos. Um, Shadow is definitely uh, very quickly, very obviously, a cloud PC uh, more than it is cloud gaming. However, it is good at cloud gaming. Um, it's a different monster than GeForce Now for sure, and um, it's not the same consumer-friendly product, but it is really awesome. So we do have our full screen. We see our P5000 there. Um, it is listing my monitor, 144 hertz. Um, I'll leave it at automatic here for the aspect ratio. I am going to change the frame rates to unlimited rather than custom, so um, that can just do whatever it wants to do. I want to see what the machine is going to do. And when I get into a little bit of gameplay, I will show both 1440p and 1080p, so you can see the frame rate difference also. And we're going to be running, um, letting the graphics all stay maxed out. The only thing that we won't have on is ray tracing. Um, that's not something supported with this card. You need to go up to the next tier where you get an RTX 2080 uh, equivalent GPU to do that. So we'll jump into some shoot the ship, which would be some uh, shipment.
I will check out. Now I'm gonna. This is about a 10 minute round, and I'm just gonna let the whole round go. Um, you know, so if you choose to hang out and uh, check the whole thing out to see how a full round of Modern Warfare will run on this uh, Shadow PC, um, that'll be great. We're gonna try this. At, this is at 1440p right now, and um, in a little bit here, I will stop and change it over to some 1080p so we can see the difference in frame rate up there. And I will add the uh, latency back in at the top also. So off of the bat, when I started playing this. Um, I could definitely feel it's not local PC, um, for sure. It does feel slightly more behind than what I'm playing on GeForce now, um, but it feels good. And I will say, I was just playing some Call of Duty on an Xbox One S earlier, um, and f basically, definitely graphically, and um, as far as the feel of the controls, it's definitely way better than playing on the console. Um, I've not played Call of Duty on my One X yet, I mostly play it on my RTX 2060 uh, with G-Sync and uh, 144 hertz most of the time. At 1080p, the RTX 2060 will run this game uh, at 100 to 144 hertz almost all the time. And it, with G-Sync on, it's just extremely smooth. And you, even though there is some input lag, there's always going to be something. It feels like there's none. Um, it absolutely feels like there's none. I haven't played anything snappier than that. But it does feel really good here on Shadow PC. Uh, now the thing is, this game took up 183 gigabytes to install for PC, and you get a 250 gigabyte SSD with this $15 a month price tier. So if you're playing a game that takes up as much space as Call of Duty, it will be the only game uh, that you can install. You will have to uninstall this to install the next game. Um, now if you install something smaller, Destiny, from Steam and some other games, you could definitely pull off installing two or three, maybe four uh, games uh, that would be smaller, but something really large like Duty is going to take up your whole SSD, and that's going to be it. Uh, in order to get a larger amount of storage, again, you've got to up your tier, um, going to like the next tier up, I think is about $30 a month, and that gets you ray tracing, uh, something like an RTX 2080, and uh, more storage. I believe it's a terabyte. So I've only had been messing with this service um, mostly the time you've seen in this video, plus I've cut away a few things and I did spend um, some extra time doing some window settings, playing around with it, shutting it down and relaunching it a few times, and kind of learning my way around. So even at the time I'm making this video, I haven't gotten to spend a lot of time with Shadow. I'm not um, definitely not judging it. I don't even do reviews, um, but just the initial setup the feel of the service, how the game's feeling for the first time on the service considering I've used PlayStation Now, I stream my Xbox, um, I use GeForce Now a good bit, and I also play on a older build with an RX 580 in it, and I also play on my high-end build um, with the RTX 2060 and the Ryzen 3600 with G-Sync. So, and also on consoles, the One S and the One X. So I have a lot of experience playing a lot of these games in a lot of different ways with TVs and monitors and different setups. Um, it feels good on Shadow. It, it does feel good on Shadow. Um, before they removed Call of Duty on GeForce Now, I would say it still ran better on that platform. Maxed out graphics with ray tracing. Um, now you couldn't get 1440p and you couldn't get 4K like you can here on Shadow. Um, you were locked in. So we're going to drop this down to 1080p so we can we can see the uh, frames jump up here. But yes, on GeForce Now, you were at 1080p, 60 frames locked. No option to go up in resolution. You couldn't unlock your frame rate. They were locked in. Uh, GeForce Now controls the game settings. You can change some of the settings, but not all of them. And um, But the experience is uh, even, le even more snappy. It felt really good. Um, and the thing is, for the price point right now, for $5 a month, um, even though you're locked to that uh, graphic, uh, to that frame rate and resolution, you do get ray tracing. Um, and the game looked amazing. Now, if I were putting Call of Duty Modern Warfare on GeForce Now versus Shadow Play, just off of my first impressions, because I only got to play Modern Warfare on GeForce Now for one day before they removed it, and I've only messed with this for a little while. And I can say it definitely seemed to play better on GeForce Now. Um, but it's a different beast. GeForce Now is not running the full-blown Windows 10. Um, it is using your launcher and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's not quite doing the same thing. It's a totally different tech, a totally different beast. Um, so it would be different. But 
I could definitely see how hooking something up like the Shadow Ghost to your TV and getting a 4K60 experience, um, which would probably cost you at least the $30 a month tier, would be pretty awesome. It would probably work really, really well. And I do have a commenter in the last video um, who, who uh, seems to swear by Shadow Ghost. I'll probably order one and test it out um, based on his input. And also, uh, he has a lot of good information in there for getting your Shadow to run really well if you need it to. Now, I don't want to make a lot of changes and adjustments. I want to run Shadow as close to how your normal, average, like, person that doesn't know a lot about this stuff would run it. Now, I'm a tech junkie. I want to dive into this stuff and really, really test out different things with Shadow. But as far as these videos and as far as just using the service, I don't want to make tons of changes. I don't want to go into a lot of the control panels and get really nutty with it. I want to run the service the way the company says to run it. I'm following their guidelines. I'm using their options, and I'm not really going into a lot of tricks and, and, and things to get things to run even better. I know there are plenty of them. There's a lot you can do to help besides their own options. There's a lot of things you can do to help with latency, input lag, and all of that. But honestly, I'm not even experiencing any of that with this setup, um, even without doing any extra work. It's working very, very well. Um, I would just say that personally, for the price to get in, for the for the zero money to five dollar a month that GeForce now charges, and for the tech that you get um, for strictly gaming, I so far would like GeForce now better. But the shame of it is they're losing games because of the way they're set up. So Shadow is different in that um, so far they're not losing access to anything because they are a full blown Windows 10 PC. They're basically building this thing for you. Um, it takes them some time and then you get going. All in all though, the experience has been pretty good. I do have a ton of experience building PCs, so setting up Shadow once it was ready for me wasn't that bad. However, I do have some friends that would not be that interested. They don't, uh, they already don't like setting up their own PCs they have now, so they don't want to have to pay for this service, uh, wait uh, one to four days, and then go in and set up Windows, download all their launchers, you know, have that amount of limited space, and uh, it is a little bit costly for what you're getting. Um, they are much more interested in either their console or GeForce Now, which has a really, really inexpensive price point right now and pretty darn good tech and low latency and working very well. It's just a shame that they're losing a lot of games, and I think that's where... Um, Shadow can kind of fill the gap. They need to raise the base plan to have at least a 500 gig SSD versus the 250. Um, at least that way you could have a large game like this plus a few small ones, but at this point with the 250 you can only fit this one game. So for the 15 a month you're kind of getting shorted more on the storage than I would like to see. Um, but as far as the power of the PC and how it's running the game at uh, 1440p and 1080p, I don't really have any complaints there. Um, it's running the game really well, it looks good, and um, the latency here is really good. And I will say, uh, for this test, I was hardwired in, but when I test my laptop and maybe one of my other uh, really low-end PCs, I will probably be on Wi-Fi. I might hardwire the one low-end tower I have, but my, um, my laptop I will definitely test on a 5 gigahertz and probably 2.4 just to see the difference um, and make some videos on that. But right now, I just wanted to to test this out for the first time, just running it on my high-end PC, uh, hardwired in, and just see how things would do um, with the service. So far, I don't have any complaints at all. It's it's a good service. It's definitely a cloud PC, not just cloud gaming. I can see um, that I'll probably use it for quite a few different things myself um, that I probably won't, won't be for my channel, but just things that I enjoy using it for. But gaming... Um, due to space and other things and price. I don't know. I don't know that I'll use it a lot for gaming, but I could see that it would be really good for a lot of people, especially anyone that just basically has no money to put out for a PC or to get something that could run a game like this at maxed out graphics, anywhere from 1080p to 4K. Um, and you could even get their highest tier plan, which is like $50 a month, and you'd be running a Titan RTX. So definitely some good options for people. Um, that would rather go that route. And you can cancel at any time also.
And also I'll say, um, doing this round, I didn't hit any major hiccups. I didn't get any of those like really weird laggy buffering moments or where all of a sudden my character jumped across the screen. Um, I never felt like my bullets weren't impacting or that I was having trouble. I could just notice that slight, slight little latency in my trigger pull and moving my gun around a little bit that I noticed on consoles, but it wasn't as bad as on consoles. So it was still pretty darn good, especially for most people. But yeah, I didn't experience any of the weird times that I thought I would. Um, and if you watch this whole round, you'll see um, that for the most part, it ran very, very smooth. It ran very well. They are giving you exactly what they're telling you they'll give you for the money. That they're, they're, they're just giving you what they say. Just like GeForce Now, you're getting exactly what they say that they're going to give you for the money. Alright, so that was um, call, around the Call of Duty there on uh, Shadow Cloud Gaming. Now you click here to exit out, and uh, it'll go out and it'll say uh, to turn off. So if you want to shut down, you can click that, and it'll actually shut down your your shadow uh, PC. Now I'll have to see how this works. It does say when you shut it down, it helps to keep it updated and ready to go to the next time you log on. So I don't know if that's also, if that's just Windows updates, graphics updates, games. I'm not sure how they do that. So, but it does say by shutting it down, it helps to ensure next time you log on that um, you'll be updated. So I do notice it does take a little bit of time to shut down. This is like the second or third time I have done it to test it out. Um, so it does take a little bit of time, and, but when it's done, it'll just say start again, and it tells you your shadow is off. All right, thanks a lot for coming to check out this video. Definitely, I will have some more on the way. Uh, click subscribe if you haven't. Please give the video a thumbs up, and feel free to leave your comment below. Thanks a lot, and I'll catch you next time.